All right, here we go. Overdrive, off and running. TSN 1050 on the TSN app. Your home smart speakers soon to be up on TSN 4. Brian Hazio, Dr. Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. How are we feeling? How are you fellas doing today? I'm great. I'm doing great. Phenomenal. Yep, feeling good. We got a lot going on in the sports world, right? It's. I know one guy who's not feeling good. Yeah, Alec Minucci. Is that who you're talking about? Um, Alec, Alec Manoa is in a really bad place. A really, really bad. Listen, he's a microcosm of the whole situation right now. Like the Jays lost again today, and they dropped three or four at the trop. They are six and fifteen versus the AL East. They have lost thirteen of their last fifteen against the AL East, and they just went through the Yankees, Orioles, Rays, and they went two and nine. So. Is this game four of the set in Tampa Bay? Yes. Oh, and they dropped three God. or four. See you later. They're out. And now they got to go to Minnesota. It was not a world beater, but, you know, they're sitting atop the AL Central, and they're a good team. So it's it's a problem. Like, there's still a game over 500, which is feels almost impossible Dude, considering it, it, the it, amount it, of losing. I always look at somewhat of the positive now, Hayes. At least in the past, they won some games where it's damage control, and this didn't sink them. Because you've seen a bunch of teams in Major League Baseball where a two-month stretch and they're done. Gone, out of it, and they have no choice. No chance, sorry. Yeah. At, at, at least they had some success where their heads are floating right above water level. Yeah, it's an issue, though. Like, it really is an issue. They just they don't look like they're elite in any area of the game right now. No, especially like any when their area. manager, that's all he talked about, all business here all business there, veteran approach, this, that, and the other. And they got a bad news Bears look to them right now. Yeah, they do. Yeah, it's just pitching is horrendous at times, bullpen problem, different guys showing up, disappearing at the plate. It's it's an all-around mess. It's not good. You look at it, Kirk, no, it's not all him. Part of it's, you know, who's on the mound, clearly. The Rays were seven for seven stealing bases today. Seven for seven, dude. That's that's what eleven Tough. year olds do when they yes. when they start allowing no, no. to me, steal bases. Let me tell you how that happens. When my dad started a baseball team in King City, everyone stole bases on us, Hayes. You know why? Because we didn't know how to pitch from the stretch. We pitched full wind up, and as soon as we stepped See back, the guy, later. <laughs> the guy was See at third. See you later. The guy was at third, and we were looking yeah. around going, what the hell's going on right now? We can't catch. And then the umpire had to pull us aside and say, guys, it was after the game. We got blown out 25 nothing or something. He goes, when you're pitching, if you don't go to the stretch, you, you're you going to get crushed. Yeah. You got, and think, you have to occasionally. That's what seven for seven is like. That's exactly what it felt like. I'm watching it, and and that's just going to continue, right? Like Jansen went for an MRI. It sounds like his groin's going to be okay, but Kirk is going to he's going to get a lot of runway here. And it, the Rays are a quick team. They're a fast team. They're a fundamentally strong team. We know that, but you cannot allow guys to just constantly swipe bags on you. And Kirk, he had a couple of hits today, but he's been a mess at the plate, a mess behind the plate. And you look at Manoa. For me, it's time to skip a start. It's time. Like, oh, skip dude. a start. And I understand they don't have, you know, someone sitting there waiting that you feel great about. I understand their bullpen isn't really anything to write home about where you feel comfortable with an opener. It's bigger than that. It's Take that a he's a prized back, asset, man. and you've got to give him a chance to reset. Look at these stats. Our boy Keegan Matheson posted. Here's where Alec Manoa ranks among the 72 qualified MLB starters. All right, 72 starters across baseball that qualify in terms of innings pitched and, and what Manoa has done up to this point in the season. He is a 5.53 ERA. That is the fifth worst, 5.53. He's got a 1.79 whip, walks plus hits divided by innings pitched. That's the worst. Dead last, 72nd. 6.37 walks per nine, the worst, 72nd. 19.08 pitches per per innings pitched the worst legitimately take his name out of it the worst pitcher in baseball right now is Alec Manoa like he's killing him he's 
He's killing them. They, and their bullpen, yes, it's getting taxed. Yes, it's not great. There's not a ton of depth there. You can't have a guy go out there every fifth inning or hey, every dude. fifth day and give you three innings. Dude. And then that, all... that exposes what, what was going on with Schneider over the weekend where he was actually humming and he had to come out because Schneider went out there for the second time in the inning. And I'm it's not going to listen. I don't care who it is on this show or Schneider. No one's going to come out this time and say, this guy cares so much, he works his ass off, and he's just right there. Because it is not the truth, and it's so far from the truth. And you're right. I don't know what the hell they're going to do with this guy because it's an embarrassing scenario when you've got this young stud who pitched the All-Star game last year. Every big game they've had in the last year and a half, he's the guy in the mound. And now he's the worst pitcher in baseball. Yeah. So it's an embarrassing scenario because egos are going to be hurt. And it's just a goofy scenario because egos get hurt when there's a big element of surprise, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody expected this to happen. And when you have to go to somebody, which is a massive surprise, and say, we got to assign you. Like, we got to skip a start. Those types of things are a massive surprise, and that's when egos get hurt. That's right. And and listen, for a young guy, I'm sure he's got a big ego. And and listen, he backed it up the last couple of years. But – this is the first real trouble he's going through, right? Like, everything's been so smooth for Alec Manoa. He's been so good. You know, he was he was one of the five best pitchers in the American League last year. This year, he came in with high expectations. Everyone thought he'd be top five, top ten for the Cy Young. And and we're talking, like, we're, we're 50-plus games into the season here. We're almost into June. This is yeah. not four or five starts. This guy is... His stats across the board are a mess, and and that's just a, a fact. And he's a big asset. He's a guy they have faith in. He, by no means am I suggesting, and I know you're not suggesting, I don't think anyone's suggesting, you're selling him down the river or you're turning on him. This is about protecting him, and this is about trying to reset him. Like, it, it's it's a mess with Manoa. And, you know, on top of it, they no power, and they can't produce any runs again today. The depth, you see, a, you take a couple guys out of this lineup and they're pulling names that you just, it's not a good look when you see this lineup card. And if injuries pop up, that's going to be troublesome. And again, their own division, which, yes, best division in baseball, but they've been in it for a long time. And that's the nature of the beast. There's no changing it, right? Rob Manfred's not going to throw the Blue Jays a bone and change things up. Well, they are Roy six Halliday and fifteen have, against the AL East. Didn't Roy Halladay have issues and he had to fix it? Yes, but he, yes, he did. He did, but like Halladay never reached the peak that Manoa did his first couple of years. But right? who cares? It's not about that. The first couple of years, it's about the end game. Yes. And if you talk about the end game, that's what you're looking for. And if you have to sacrifice something to fix something with the end game in mind, then you got to do it. There's I just no question. I don't about disagree it. with you. I'm just saying I. It's not apples for apples, like what Doc went through and what Manoa's going through now. And, you know, there's high expectations on this team. You're chasing – like the Rays are now ten and a half up. Like you're not chasing the division anyway, but you're just trying to keep pace. You're trying to keep your head up above water right now and just try to stay in the wild card race. And, like, Manoa's a mess. Barrios has been better than we thought, but it's still not great. You know, mm-hmm. Kikuchi is still Kikuchi. Like, you know, you, what you got last night is what you're going to get. Yeah, you, you know, it's like, out. okay, he's all right. I guess he survived, gave you five innings. Like, you got Gosman, you got Bassett. Uh, you got an arm or two out of the bullpen. And outside of that, like, they, they are not – it doesn't feel like they're above average in any possible What are you going right to say now. if Steve Phillips says, I think he's close? I, I'd be shocked <laughs> if he said that. I, I'd well, be sh- I mean, I guess I will challenge him on that. Is that what you want to hear? Steve and I can go Steve Phillips, you, Are you seriously? And, and believe me, sorry, guys, it was Wayne's world here. I was soaking up, and I, I don't know why. It, Dang, I whatever. couldn't We're hear good. you guys. We're but good. Anyways, Kikuchi's a mess, and honestly, they need to be better. But if you challenge Phillips, there's no way he's going to say – He's close. Like it's, they, no, they he's, that's the whole been. point. He's not saying that because if he does, again, I'll read off the stats we just read off. 553 ERA, 179 yeah. whip. You know, he's he's throwing a ton of pitches. He threw, I think, 40 pitches in the second inning today. Like, that's a grind, man. Dude, this guy, he can't, he can't what, get out of innings. What's the solution, though? Like, they're, like I said, uh, over the weekend watching the games – 
there doesn't seem to be one thing. It's like, yeah, if you could just get this, like, what, what would, where would you start? Where is the start? Well, of them digging out. As I, I, I mean, ultimately, you got to wait for the bats to come around. That's a big part right. of it. Is they're just they're not run producing. They're not getting big hits. They're not hitting for power. Too many guys are slumping at the same time, and that's a concern. As for the arms, I mean, obviously that's on Pete Walker and Schneider and company to try to figure out, but it's not good. Like if no. Manoa keeps going in this direction, Barrios, Kikuchi, you have three-fifths of a rotation that you can't really feel great about. You're in trouble. That's just baseball, man. There's nothing you yeah. can do. And they, they don't have a, a, a bullpen that's so steady and so stacked – where you can even say to a starter, just get us to the fifth or sixth and we'll take it from here. That's not how they're right. built. They're built for their starters to throw a lot of innings and then try to shrink their bullpen, like ideally. And that's just not the way it's playing out. So we'll see what Phillips has to say. Steve will join us just after 5.30. Richard Griffin back on the show, too. we got Griff coming in hot. Nice. So Griff will have a lot to say, I'm sure. Catch up with Griff again. That'll be awesome. Um, Brady Kuchuk coming up. I'm sure he's down in Florida. I'm assuming he's still yeah, there. It feels like I the whole Kachuk saw, family's down there. I thought I saw him. So the dad, Keith, was kind of in the stands and very visible and joined. For some reason, I thought they panned over to Brady just kind of in a luxury box, like, you know, not front and center. So, you know, I want to ask him, like, that's twice in a row because I ran into him in Calgary where his brother was playing against Edmonton in the second round last year and – now he's, you know, watching his brother go to a Stanley Cup final. Like, does that drive him? Like, he, you know, are you chomping at the bit? Because it's, it's, you know, you got to be happy for your brother, but this is a guy who's the captain of the Ottawa Senators. He wants to see that team turn the corner because he well, wants that feeling too, right? Of course he does. I mean, I think we all know the answer to that. Like, obviously, he's, I'm sure he's inspired, but he needs, he needs some horses with him, yep, right? Agreed. Like, yep. he can play like Matthew to an extent. He's, you know, they're different players a little bit but he you got to rely on the rest of the team you know you got florida they were they almost missed the playoffs and now you look at what they're doing and the way it played out last night um that's just magical i mean the fact that matthew scores with four seconds left is yeah. magical i mean that's what it is it's just one of those runs where everything is going their way you know, like yeah. everything breaks their way, and and Bob had himself a night again. He's had himself a remarkable run. Kachuk is the epitome of clutch. Bennett's the most feared guy in the league. Man, you know, oh man, was that a hit? Nonstop. Oh, that's man. a massive, great hit. Like that's a knock the wind out of you and knock you into next week type of hit. Which you know, you, you obviously hope Slavin's okay, but. He didn't jump. He didn't get his elbow up. He just That's he went the best right hit through. I've seen in five years, I think. I, yeah. I, I don't know how else you could describe. Like, if you put in a video dictionary the way to hit and, and catch a guy by surprise on the four check, it's that right there. We obviously do you, don't want to see anyone get hurt, but. Do you, do you guys remember? Like, that reminded me of Sveshnikov on Lindholm a year ago. The exact same hit. Remember, Lindholm was coming around the net like that, and Sveshnikov destroyed him. If you go back and look at it, that hit, that shoulder, yeah, it looks like maybe their heads click, but that is, that was, uh, I felt bad for him. Like it's right that's, through it. It's like a know, running back coming around a, a tackle, and there's a linebacker just waiting yeah. for him. And uh, it's uh, just, you know, he's on the ice. He's got the puck. You know, it's just a massive, massive collision, and, like Bennett is not a big dude. No, he's not, not a big guy. He just he's so sturdy and he he you know we always use this term he plays for keeps. That's yeah. what he's looking to do. And cool. like people in Toronto hate him, people in Carolina hate him. I would guess people in Boston hate him. And yet he's he's going I to think a cup everyone final. Everyone hates him except yeah. us. Everyone Until hates him your unless team. you're a Panther fan. That's well, right. Well, if he's on your team, you love him. But exactly. You, you, you lo like he's a guy you don't want to play against because you're right. Like he's he's doing what it what it takes to to go deep into the playoffs. And the thing is, is he's a unique guy because he plays a top six role. We usually see those guys who are more physical, they're more feared in a bottom six role, and that's why it's 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 unique. Tom Wilson's a unique guy. Evander Kane's a unique guy because they're top six players that play with bite. Usually we see top six guys that are more skilled, a little bit 
you know, a little bit shy, that type of stuff that, that like to play a fancier game. He doesn't play a fancy game. It's meat and potatoes with him. And yeah, he comes. That's kind of how they're all wired. Like Bar- Barkov is not, you know, he's not a meat and potatoes. He's, no, he's just no. a great, smart player. Verhage, the same thing. Duclair speed. After, you see Barkov during the pressers. He literally just sits there like this. <laughs> no pulse. Nothing. Not, yeah. Nothing. Well, he doesn't what, need to have personality because no. Kachuk's got it all, right? Like Matthew Kachuk, Matthew Kachuk, I, I understand he's a different beast. And right. not everyone is going to be wired like this, obviously. And he comes from a family where everyone knows the Kachuks. Keith Kachuk was vocal and fun and, you know, he'd say what was on his mind. But this is how he was in Calgary, right? This idea that athletes and hockey players, they can't step outside the box, or they won't, or they don't want to say the wrong thing. He'll say whatever he wants, whenever he wants. He did it in a Canadian market. He's doing it in Florida. And, yes, Florida's different because of the media, but not anymore. If you're in a conference final, the media's there. Everyone's there. Yeah. There's there's dozens and dozens of people in your face constantly. The biggest sports networks in North America are in his face all the time. He never turns down an interview. He, he never gives you a cliche answer. He, he's always – and obviously it's easy to do it now because it's a dream run for him. I right. get it. You know, if, if they get swept in the cup final, I wouldn't expect him to be Mr. Jovial, obviously. But he is he is proving that if you got a personality and you can back it up on the ice, show it. Go have fun. Go do it. Say what's on your mind. Talk a big right. game. Have some fun. He's got one-liners. The guy's – it's just incredible what he's doing. Yeah, and I mean scoring scoring overtime goals and pointing to the pointing to the door like he scored an yeah. over, like that's a pretty the first two on the road. It's it's pretty funny. Like you know, they he gets interviewed afterwards, and what did he just say to the boys? Like bus and ten, he said. Like he, yep. he's got. You're right. It's 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 jokes and enjoying yourself when you're on the winning side. But this guy's. It seems like that team is enjoying it, and so they should. I mean, I I'll be honest. I thought it was a bit of a soft call. Like you, you can't make that call at that time of the game. Like I, I don't know if you. Like, yeah, yeah, the trip. I, I thought it was a, you know, I felt bad for Rod Brindamore last night. Like he did his best to. He's a very poised individual, and you know he was proud of his group. Talked about injuries. Talked about you know, listen, we got swept, but we were in every game, which he, which he wasn't wrong. You're in every game, but you just come up short. But he basically, and I, I would agree with him. Like you got to do something, and I know that you got to call penalties, and that's that's probably by the letter of the law a trip. But man, oh man! But like, they put the whistle away for so much other well, stuff. Well, that's what I that's what I mean. Areas. Like, I, I like just obviously felt Leaf like, fans are like, "What the hell?" But they're right. Yeah. Like that stall hit on Marner at the end of the game in Game Five was a joke. And the ref right. was looking at. It. He's like, "I'm not calling that." There's 30 seconds left. Then yeah. last night, I'm like, "Yeah, all right." Fine, trip. And it's not like it's the insane. Puck, that's insane. To it's call ridiculous. That. I, it's embarrassing, I, and it's what the NHL always does to themselves. It's always self-inflicted. They they're very selective with when yeah. we're going to actually call something. It'd be one thing if that puck popped into the front of the net and someone had a great opportunity, Agreed. you know, Agreed. or something yeah. like that. Okay, but it was still it was moving up the boards. It likely wasn't going to have any effect on anything, and you know they call it. And and listen, you know how I feel about review. I hate it. I hate right. it, and let, let me point this out. I thought, like, the exuberance of the moment and all that. But if you're going to have the rule, for me, Bennett sticks in his – That's that should not have groin. counted. <laughs> yeah. Like, that, that was blatant. Bennett's stick is in his pads. But that yeah. was a classic Brad Hall 99. They're like, what are we going to do? We're not calling this back. There's four seconds left. We won't get out of here alive. <laughs> like, his stick is in his pads. Yeah, I, I mean, I – Like, for all the ones that they've called, though, for okay. years, like if they call right. that back on a Tuesday in November in the second period, you'd say, "Yeah, okay, of course, I guess." Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're, you know. yeah, you're right. It's just I, I've gone, I've gotten to the point now where people say this all the time: "What is pass interference? What is goaltender interference?" Because mm-hmm. it's subjective. Yeah. It's subjective. Like True. that's legitimately what we what we are looking at, and I don't know if it's ever going to get better. Because it's the three of us can have a different opinion in looking at the exact same play. And I would think that all three of us have pretty good hockey backgrounds and have, you know, reasonable heads on our shoulders. But you're looking at something going, you're right, like, yeah, the stick is in there. 
messing with them a little bit. I just like, think there's no chance. It didn't matter. They're like, we're not, right. unless it's so egregious, they're like, we're not calling this back. Well, that's Kachuk the- just scored. It's a sweep. Everyone wants to go home. Forget <laughs> well, it. I, I think, but that's where I come back to it. Like, I thought it was overtime. And then that call, I'm like, Man, that's just a tough call. Yeah. Like it just, uh, it is what it is, and the Florida Panthers and deserve sweep, to be. Right? Exactly. We love Rod Brindamore. Love Rod, Br- and I know what he was driving on. It's yeah. a sweep, man. You got. Well, swept. yeah, on, on paper it's a sweep. There's, <laughs> there's nothing no, you can do about it. Nothing yeah. you can do. It, so they were you th- <laughs> incredibly close games, but it's a sweep. Did you, did you think that was the equivalent of respect in the handshake line? Is well, that what you're saying? Uh, it, but it was towards his own team, right? Like he's right. he's and again he's not wrong that every like the first two went to overtime the first one to the fourth overtime and then the other two games were one goal games and i thought carolina was better in both like i I, he's not wrong in terms of the analysis that it was very close i think his message was simple it could have gone either way but the better team won basically like is that not the message you got from that I did, and I sure, also think he was pointing it to his players, saying, like, I'm proud of that group. We did. Yeah. You know what? You're right there. Um, it's unfortunate because you'd like to see if they were healthy, you know, maybe get one of those guys that, that gets them over the top. But unfortunately, you will never know. And Florida is on a heater. They, they seem like they're a Cinderella story. Now, what happens? Can they finish it off? Because we always see these Cinderella stories go to the finals. But do they fizzle out, or do they get to? Do they actually win? Well, like that's the the, uh, the thing is they're going to play likely Vegas, yeah. Who you know, there's a, an element of Cinderella to their run. Is well. they got Aiden Hill in the net, you know, and and yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't see that. I don't see Florida getting run over. Um, but the nature of these playoffs have, have been very unpredictable. So Brady Kachuk coming up in ten. Craig Conroy, the new GM. Uh, the Flames will join us just after 5 o'clock. we got Phillips coming up today. we got a lot cooking. A report about the PA and Dubas and his agent. Yeah, We'll, we'll try to get to the bottom of that, what, what's that supposed to be all about. And the Jays, uh, they lost again today. And Manoa got rocked. And it just looks like a really bad scene. It's a really bad scene. They're a mess. Let's call it what it is. They're, they're a mess right now, the Jays. Yeah. And... Um, it's not going to get easier moving forward, especially if Jansen's going to be banged up, which feels like that's likely the case. So Steve Phillips still to come in about an hour. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. Now, back to Overdrive with Hayes, Noodles, and the O-Dog. All right, Brady and Chuck coming up here in a moment. We're tracking the uh, block party, Michael Block. It doesn't sound like he's having that much fun. He's slashing it. Let's call it what it is. What is he over? Is... Well, he's uh, he's back to three over through five. And I guess he sculled the wedge at one point, and it went like miles over the green. And it I just, was worried it, it's about not good. this. It's not no. good. No. Yeah. It's not good. And he's, you know, he's taking pictures with people while he's oh, walking the course. No. Like stuff like that can't happen. You know so what I mean? He's distracted. You, yeah. It's just like a you know chili chunk in a bunker. It's it, I think this might be the skull. <laughs> it's really not good. No, that wasn't actually. That's worse than the skull. Yeah, it's not good. It's What's not the good. score I mean, though? Do you have like it? Is he is he like he's three plus over eight? through five? He's three over through. He but did dude, birdie a hole. I I, I, I want to say he's got a, four bogeys and a birdie. So I was talking about it with Dougie. three over through seven. Now it's the latest update for the block party. So. You know, take it for what it's worth. He He's, said yesterday if he had Rory's length, he'd be one of the greatest in the game. It's like, stop saying stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you can't say stuff like that, man. No. Like you, you just, you can't, like, yes, your short game's good, obviously. You know, you're a very good wow. player, but you're not 20 more yards off the tee from being top five <laughs> in the world at 46. Guys, yeah. I, like, I need Rory's not. length because the rest of my game is dynamite. It's right. just wow. no way. Can't no have way. It, man. Can't have got, it. Yeah. We'll play that audio later this afternoon. I want to let that marinate a little bit. I want to see if he can get, you know, his round turned back around. Let's see yeah. what happens. I got to be honest. I ran into a gentleman downtown Kleinberg just not maybe two hours ago. And a little quick stop and chat. And he goes, I know you. He said, your noodles. He goes, I'm Frankie's brother-in-law, Andrew. He goes, golfed with him today. He hit one off the tee, 343. 
Mm. Believe it. Does Frankie hit that? Believe yeah. it. DeShambo. Yeah, he can Frank hit a goal. Frank DeShambo. 343. And he said there might have been a little bit of roll, but he said this guy is a, a machine off the tee. Just and ask I, him. I said, wow. Well, that's like, smart. He's smart. He's got people going out there and tell, stopping people in the street. Hey, do you hear what Frank hit today? <laughs> I need. Why isn't my wife doing that for me? Stopping people. Hey, do you hear what, what? Brian Hayes just did? <laughs> Brian I Hayes shot 79. I don't think it's low a low hooking crop duster, 97 <laughs> yards, and it rolled 15. She brought, yep. That's something she'd do. Hey, do you hear this? He sucks, and I hope he gets worse. Oh, okay. Thank I you. just think – I don't think it was a PR campaign from Frankie it Corrado. It Wouldn't just, that be it was, wild if Frankie was sending out, like, spies – to spread the word on what he's hitting at, you know, wherever he happens to be playing. Oh, that would be hilarious. That he yeah. just, he knows that I pick my kids up at a certain time. It just <laughs> happens. To, hey, go go down there at that time and just, right. you know, walk the street and run into a little stop and chat. Let him, let him know I hit hey. 343 today. You look familiar. <laughs> Is that noodles? <laughs> Guess what? Frank Corrado, I'm his brother-in-law. He hit 343 earlier today. Yeah. yeah, pass it on. Air. Pass it yeah. on. Pass it on. If you want, if you want to pass it on, go ahead. Anywhere in Kleinberg Woodbridge area, you know that that meme of the guy that holds the cardboard sign. It'll just says Frank DeChambeau hit one three forty three today. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Just Street a corner. matter of time. Just a matter of time. So I anyway, uh, all good. We love Frankie, and and he yeah. does hit bombs. There's no question. Uh, Craig Conroy coming up in just over half an hour. I wonder how people in Calgary are thinking, you know, watching Matthew Kachuk and what he's been doing for the Florida Panthers. And I'm curious what his brother's thinking, watching him be an absolute rock star. I mean, game winners in game one, game two, game four. That one was probably the coolest one because it was on home ice and it sent everyone packing with four seconds to go. Here he is, the captain of the Ottawa Senators, Brady Kachuk. How you doing, Brady? Doing great, thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, thank you for doing this. Uh, I know you weren't at the game last night, but you've seen a, you've been watching it all, and you've seen a bunch of, uh, you know, what these guys are doing and what your brother's doing, and like the clutch gene. Are you a believer in that? And uh, how much of it are you seeing out of your brother the last month and a half? Yeah, no, it's definitely been uh, been you know special. It's been uh, you know just to see him kind of find that next level. You know, being a uh, just as his brother, just, just trying my best to to support him in every way I can. And, and honestly, it's been, you know, a great experience for me because, you know, I just see what, you know, he's putting into it and, and just how much he's, his intensity has kind of created, you know, where Florida is now. He, he, you know, I said this earlier, it's just he single-handedly, you know, put them in this position and, and he just keeps stepping up at the right times. And, and it's been great for me because, you know, I see what he's doing and, and it's created this extra, you know, motivation for myself and, uh, that's something I want to do, and I want to provide to Ottawa. Um, you know, I think the city needs it, and it's uh, been great because I get to watch Matthew firsthand. Hopefully he gets it done this year, and, and after that, it's, uh, it's our turn up in Ottawa. How much fun is Big Walt having at the games? Does he take a pregame nap, nap for all that excitement he's got going on up there, or how much fun is he having? Uh, you'd think he's a player right now. It's his routine. He's uh, <laughs> he, he, he gets the the morning. Do walk tell, in. do tell, yeah. do tell. He's got the morning walk in. He wants to go pregame with the boys, but instead he's just just chill at the house, sits by the pool, and then uh, I think he does get a little pregame nap in, and then uh, um, that's kind of all sales ahead. So it's uh, <laughs> no, it's been great. He's he, he's been loving it. Um, you now my mom has been down there a lot. My sister has been. Uh, uh, Make a trips here and there, and of course, you know, been to been to two games, kind of in the background. But uh, yeah, no, just to see how proud my parents are, and and you know, my sister and, and myself, just of Matthew and what he's done, and um, it's been awesome. It's been awesome. The, you know, the family's fired up, and you hear of a lot of people, you know, here in St. Louis, uh, um, everybody's watching right now. So it's uh, definitely cool to cool to see, and I'm happy for Matthew. Watching this uh, this run for Matthew Brady, you talked about you know how you'd like to do it yourself. Is there anything you take away in, in just seeing what the guys have had to go through to go deep into the playoffs, the level of play, the difference between regular season and the playoffs? Oh, just you know, just to relate to them, it's just we're six points behind them, you know, and it's uh, and I think the biggest lesson I think that everybody's learning is is that once you get in, anything can happen. And I, I will say this, and I've said this to him, 
I've probably been doubting the most from the start, you know, playing against Boston, or, you know, playing against them this year. It's, it's some of the hardest games. They don't give you much. And, and just seeing that they just had the belief, uh, you know, that Matthew tells you about, you know, the belief in the locker room and, and it goes back to when they were down three, one, he's like, our only goal right now is to make them fly back to Florida for game six. And then, Going to then they win game six, go into game seven in Boston, and I see him. He's he's packed for a week. So um, just a, the, the little things that I caught on with him, and just the belief, and and just being with Matthew. It's it's, it's of course playoffs is a huge deal, but it's almost like he predicted and knew this was going to happen. He had that feeling. So um, just to kind of be near and, and see that, and and then of course with how he's been performing on the ice, and um, I, I think just the next day he moves on from it. It's just, it's crazy in that, in that aspect that he's just always focused on the next one. So um, now I think this is the farthest that anybody's ever been in our family. Of course, I don't think my dad got to this position. So um, everyone's uh, uh, for sure uh, all in with Matthew right now. We're chatting with Brady Kachuk. Um, you expect Brooks Kapka to be riding the cup final wave? Like what's it like hanging out with Kapka? Everyone saw the vid, you and you and him and the Wanamaker trophy. This guy's been on fire down there in South Florida. Yeah, no, it's uh, especially if the Heat uh, uh, win as well. It's uh, it's been great for them uh, for that you know community down there in South Florida, and and yeah, he's a big Panther fan, so uh, I, I'd expect him to kind of be there the rest of the way, and and uh, you know it's great, uh, of course, to see and you no, know, I'm biased, but see what Matthew's done for for them, and and just uh, everybody talks about the difference a different kind of element he brought in and, and uh, it's exactly what the team needed. I know it was a, a crazy trade at the time, but um, we knew what Matthew was all about. And I think uh, um, he's stepping up and he's stepping up in a, in a big way. That's uh, he's proven a lot of people wrong and, and uh, he's carrying uh, carrying load and just uh, doing it. Cause I know he, uh, he fully believes in, in himself and in that team. Brady, there's been nights for I've called your game that we've been down in Florida and and the building is does not sound and look like that. I mean, you know, it's, it's a situation you you're looking at, it's, it's sold out. The fans are going nuts. They're throwing rats. Uh, I mean, is it it just is it hockey fever down there? I mean, you just if you build a winner, they'll come because uh, like I say, it was there were some nights where it was pretty lean where you know you could tell there was maybe ten thousand people in the stands instead of them hanging from the rafters. Yeah, no, it's uh, honestly, it's kind of giving me chills, um, you know, going down there and seeing, you know, those two games and seeing almost the big moment, the, the pop off that the fans get. And honestly, it just, I feel like I keep saying that. It's just, it's just something that I want to bring to Ottawa. I think, you know, the city needs it. You know, it's been six years. And um, no, that's kind of, that's, that's all it's been on my mind is, you know, going to watch Matthew. Of course, I want him to get it done. And, and, uh, um, have all the faith and confidence him in and being his number one fan. And, but just seeing that it just always, you know, motivates me to, to do this in Ottawa. You know, I, I go back to, you know, their cup run, um, a bunch of years ago and then their, uh, you know, their run there in 2017. It's, uh, it's something that you see how passionate Ottawa is. And it's just, um, you kind of got a taste of it throughout this year. And, and how we, you know, we are pushing, we're close and, um, there's something that, of course, you see now that it's it's not about getting the playoffs for them. I think Florida was happy to get in the playoffs, but they believe that they can go even farther. So I think that's going to be the, a lot of you know, our expectations moving forward is that um, not only do we want to take the next step, but we just got to have that belief that we can beat, beat anybody. With Brady Kachuk, um, any of these uh, prospective new owners out in Ottawa reaching out to you? And, and if so, if they called you and said, hey, what's it like you know, being an Ottawa senator, what, what kind of pitch would you make to them? Yeah, well, it's, uh, to be honest with you, I think I know as much as um, everybody else does. It's I uh, don't know too much what's going on in the background, and, of course, it's exciting. And, and uh, uh, no, it's, been, it's of course, been a long process for everybody, and just I think everybody's just interested and intrigued uh, on what's going to happen. And, and, you know, I know it's going to be uh, whatever, whatever happens going to be what's meant to be. But uh, I'm excited. Of course, it's uh, – um, I think they're inheriting the – uh, a great group of guys um, and a, a team that can do a lot of special things down the road. Of course, no, um, there's no pressure, but 
I think that's just the belief that, you know, being gone for a month and talking to a lot of the guys, everybody wants to get back going again and, and kind of just do what Fuller has been doing and, and proving everybody wrong. And um, it's, I think that speaks volumes. The character we have in the room is that uh, – we, we want to be in this, everybody agrees, we want to be in this position that Florida is, and, um, and all the doubters doubt them, but uh, it's all about proving them wrong. Brady, do you, uh, what's the routine for you as far as, do you take a little bit of time after the season, let the body heal and get back to working out? Like uh, for us on the panel here, it was always a couple months off, and then you st- start in the summer and try and chip away at getting back into shape. But in today's athlete, is it almost year-round, or what's it, what's it like for you? Yeah, I think I took uh, um, probably a shorter um, time off because uh, I think you know, I probably had way more motivation to get back into working out, just seeing what Matthew's doing. And, um, and uh, yeah, no, I probably took uh, a little bit of a shorter break. I'd say it's more year-round now, but it's also important. Uh, you know, there's a lot of bumps and bruises throughout the season, and, and uh, I got to make sure those are healed up and – uh, so there's no issues throughout the summer, but yeah, there's definitely been way more motivation to to get going and and uh, to take that next step and next level, you know, as a player as well. Brady, I want to go back to Walt. Most dads, hockey dads, they never played. They don't know what the hell's going on. You guys have emerged as NHL superstars. Does although your dad was an NHL superstar himself. Does the advice and the game, like the in-game comments, do they slow down, or is Walt still in your both of your ears after games and stuff? Oh, he's as invested as anybody. He's still, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's. We still get uh, our advice after every games, and uh, you no, know, a tough stretch. If, if we're both individually having a tough stretch, he'll he'll kind of light that fire underneath us to get going again, and. Um, but it's all because, of course, you know, it loves us. But he's just such a you know, useful, almost tool to have that, like you said, not many people have you know, their dads be you know, unbelievable hockey players when they play it and, and know what they're talking about. But um, And that it's just a tool that's kind of separate from coaches and people in the hockey world just to have him just um, kind of see his point of view in certain things and, and what he would do. And um, it's, I, I think it's, it's helped Matthew and I tremendously. And and uh, but yeah, for sure. You know, after a bad game, I, I, it takes me a little bit longer to you know check my phone because uh, I'm not sure what, what's going to be on it when I, uh, after the game. So if Big Walt's going to light the fire, what would that sound like coming from him to one of you guys? Yeah, well, it's, uh, I think everyone close to him knows uh, for sure that just you know just play better. Uh, so that's that's probably number one that uh, he's used, but. Uh, no, it's just certain things where you know certain situations plays and, and other things like that. But uh, um, yeah, no, I know he's probably number one fan for um, you know the Panthers and then for the Sens during the year. So he's uh, he's as invested as anybody. Well, it's uh, it's going to be a Wild Cup final. Obviously, the Kachuks are, are well represented with Matthew on his way there, and the Panthers. And and like you've been saying, Brady, you know everyone's waiting for for Ottawa to take that next step. It feels like every year you guys are getting better and better and. I'm sure the expectations will, will be just that for next season. Uh, really appreciate the insight and you find a time for us. We'll, we'll do it again down the road and enjoy the rest of the off season. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Thank you. Have a good one. You got it, Brady Kachuk, captain of the Ottawa Senators. Well, yeah. I mean, you could. There's people that talk about, you know, Walt may have been the catalyst for Florida when wasn't he on the morning First show? AK. Yeah, he yeah, went yeah, on with, with AK Carlo and Carlo, AK. right? It was like, and, oh, they're soft. You know, they're getting, getting what they, they deserve. deserve. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, what they deserve. They're you know? getting like, what they deserve. That's tough. Like, you know, maybe that was the turning point because it was public. He's a public guy, and everyone know, hears about a Walt Kachuk comment. And yeah. I, who knows, man? Who knows? Well, it seemed like kind of after that interview. They kind of went on that run. Now, you can have your TSN turning point. Obviously, Alex Lyon played very well. It started here in Toronto. Maurice melting down on the bench on That's that. Right. Uh, the um, Was it a disallowed goal or something? And they ended up overturning it, but he still had the meltdown, right? Like, it was uh, such a weird. You can point to a couple different things and go, okay, there it was. It was Walt's comments. It's Lyon taking over a net. It's Maurice melting down. But it's, you know, I liked what he said where, 
know, there was a belief kind of where the guys are like, hey, you, it's almost like you're loose. You're like, whatever happens, hey, we're down in this series against Boston. You're down 3-1. It's like, yeah, let's make them go back to Florida. That's all we need to do. You know, and, and now they're on this crazy run. It seemed pretty, uh, pretty cool to pretty see. Pretty incredible. Yeah. yeah, you look at it like Bob took over in that series, obviously, but you, you look at the last two rounds, he's 8-1. He's and one. Rock star. 8-1, yeah. and, and the one game he lost, he gave up two to the Leafs in game four. Like, that's how Crazy. good he's played. That's how, you know, the Panthers, and, and because he's played so well, it's allowed other parts of their game, you know, to be profiled. Like, Matthew Kachuk has been so clutch. The reason he right. can be is because Bob's keeping the puck out of the net. Like, these guys aren't scoring five, six goals a night. No. Right. Like they're they're squeezing by. They're winning. All these games are tight. The, the Leafs series, they won game one, 4-2. I think it was with an empty netter. Maybe Montour made it 4-2. Yeah. Um, 3-2 game two. Game three was an overtime, 3-2. Like, every every game is a one-goal game, and it's tight. And they're winning an overtime. Like, it's – but it's, they're comfortable in that, which is crazy. They you know are. I mean? You know, and then like, you look at the way they play. We've talked about it a lot. Dump and chase. You know, they play physically. When in doubt, they they just flip the puck out. They've mastered that effectively. Like, just relieve stress from their zone. And that's enough. Yeah. They're in a All cup right. final. So, good for them. Now you know, they get everyone's to sit back. Out. What's that? Now they get to sit back. Now they could just, well, you know, maybe not we for long. I mean, well, if for Vegas a night, wins here. For a yeah, night. exactly. Uh, we didn't say that. You know Pete DeBoer and the Stars are going to fight back. Exactly. You so? Your okay. guys, your guys are going to win tonight. Spotter, your boy, and Pete, yeah. they're going to battle back. Yep, sure. If you, if you say sweep, they are gonna they might fly up here and, and attack you. What if they get swept? <laughs> I mean, what do you want out of me? I don't play the games. I'm just saying. You know, smart money is on uh, smart Dallas money. tonight. Smart they're sitting in the Dallas. dressing room right now listening smart to Smart money is on Dallas. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, we're tracking uh, the block party, Michael Block, down at the Colonial. We'll keep you updated on that. Craig Conroy, in about 20 minutes, the Jays lost again today, and that's three or four they dropped at the Trop against the Rays. Steve Phillips in about 45 minutes. What do you do with Alec Manoa? What do you do with Al uh, Alejandro Kirk behind the plate? It's a mess right now. Like, that's what it is. The Jays are in a really, really bad place. So more on that in about 45. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. Now, back to Overdrive with Hayes, Noodles, and the O-Dog. Shout out to my dad, always looking out for me. Called me in the break and said, Jeff, I got to tell you, the Kachuk boy's dad's name, Keith, not Walt. I go, Dad, that's his nickname. Okay. <laughs> I would yeah. never butcher that. But remember when I talked about just the sports complaining? Coco commented on a, a picture. Now people are complaining that the NHL conference champion hats are not good enough. They're garbage compared to the NBA. And really? Utterly, I haven't seen it. I didn't see that. Okay. Yeah, like I saw like, that. Someone sent pictures of like different hats, and then they showed the Panthers hat from last night, and it looked like it was from – a discount store and people are up in arms saying that and you Pacific know Coco Mall. had to weigh in Coco was like this is a joke come on NHL it's just I, we just I, can't I, stop complaining yeah like that takes a lot of energy you know listen I for, we do this for a living I give you a take on a lot of different things finding a take on a hat um. In the conference final, I just I can't I can't get there. And but I that's the thing; like you're almost shocked it places. came across some it came across someone's plate where they're like, "I'm going to weigh in on this, and I'm going to get hats." Just find the tweet that Coco. Okay. And yeah, I it, didn't it, see. I saw the hats. I didn't see. And and someone else about. had to step in and say, "In fairness, those were the actual championship hats from the NFL and NBA." And there's just this little piddly the, – the Panther hat. It's just so like stupid. people are losing it over so what stupid. hats go out. Yeah, wow. They so touched stupid. the trophy. That's I saw that, right? Oh, yeah. They touched the trophy. Like, yeah. Barkov yeah. was – Skating around with the thing, basically. I mean, he. Well, it's pretty impressive. Why not? I mean, why not Doesn't enjoy matter. it? Doesn't matter. You touch the trophy, and that makes no difference what's going to happen in a couple. I final. sat beside that trophy and drank two Bud Lights on the way to the airport. Mm -hmm. It was a have, very nice evening. Have That's you ever? Have you guys ever touched the real Stanley Cup? 
I think so. Dude, I was at a party in Niagara Falls. I was at a fantasy camp, and I was in a taxi with the Stanley Cup and one of the holders. And I get out of the cab, and I had had a fun day, let me just say that. And the cup was seat belted into the van, and I grabbed the cup and I went to put it over my shoulders. <laughs> and the guy goes, "Don't even think about doing that. You got to win it to do it." And I'm like, "Okay, okay, <laughs> sorry." And then I see these other guys, like Charles Barkley and other goon athletes, are around the cup, and they're David Ortiz is holding oh, yeah. it. And I'm like, "Why yeah. did that guy tell me?" It I guess it's a hockey me. player thing. Like, ma- but you see, people. Celebrities are always holding. Dude, I was and... told, like, if I was going to be arrested if I did it. Right. Like, don't even think about doing and it's, that. It's I'm like, only okay. the Stanley Cup that that happens. We just saw the Brady Kachuk, you know, drinking out of the Wanamaker Trophy, the PG. Like, right. no other trophy. No one, no one cares about any other trophy. Go ahead, pick it up. I don't care. What does nah, it matter? It's... But the cup, you can't. Don't well, touch it. It's don't like touch sta- the cup. It's like standing on team logos in the oh, dressing room. Remember so Bieber? Stupid. Like Justin Bieber got absolutely <laughs> so destroyed. It's like as if he knows or cares. Well, yeah. apparently the Panthers have been flying around like a big a big rug with their logo on it. And I guess in Carolina, the rooms are so small, it takes up like 70% of the floor. Yeah. And the reporters are all up in arms. They're like, what do you want me to do? Like, I yeah. got to get over there. I, who cares if I walk across this thing? <laughs> it's so stupid. That's Overdrive true, brought though. to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Craig Conroy, new GM out in Calgary. He'll join us. Steve Phillips, what do they do with Alec Manoa now in Toronto after another poor start? That more coming up in hour two. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.